Wargaming have made millions of dollars doing questionable content within World of Tanks, but this video is looking at one specific item that has been completely and utterly broken when it was first released, but does it still stack up in today's meta and should you part with your money right now as I have done in the past with, of course, the Scorpion G. How's it going guys? It's Epsilon and today we have the Scorpion G performing to the highest ability even if it will cost you £30 currently as it is in the store and if you are interested in picking this thing up hopefully this video will give you an idea or if you're wanting to take these things out you certainly can because it's nowhere near as overpowered as when it was first introduced back in the day. Now this tank has been in the game for multiple years at this point and it's of course uh, finding itself against those power creep mechanics that Wargaming introduced things like the BZ and that was really where this thing can suck but what doesn't suck about it is that main armament and the fact that this is a super good silver earner so straight out the bat a really good one to kick it off with uh, in restarting our daily uploads on the channel so if you haven't already go back and have a look at some of the other content if you haven't uh, and see whether you like that and of course if you have then do subscribe but what this video is not focusing on, not anything to do with the channel, but on Wargaming's end of creating the super expensive premium vehicles that are genuinely just better than tech tree uh, vehicles. Now, this was one of the first kind of of the whole host of premiums that literally were just flat out better than the tech tree equivalent. Now, the Scorpion G, for those of you that don't know, is essentially a mobile Borsig with uh, a Panther hull that is essentially just pretty much better in every way other than the fact that you can't use the 15 centimeter and actually if you want to compare this then maybe you want to have a look at the Borsig video we did a few weeks back which showcases the Borsig um, and how it can still compete even being one of the older uh, of the kind of standard tech tree vehicles in the game but the Scorpion G in particular has the 12.8 centimeter that you're typically accustomed with with all of the German tank destroyers and as you move through the tech tree lines there's plenty of German vehicles that have this 12.8 and it does 490 alpha damage as I'm sure you know if you played World of Tanks for any length of time and I'm sure you've been hit by one of these things camping at the back and not getting spotted so it's one of those things where this vehicle tries to have it all and it does have most of it except from of course the armor model as you can expect this tier 8 vehicle as a TD can be really really sneaky can be a bit of a pain in the ass for the enemy team you're dealing 490 consistently to opponents you can rack up huge amounts of damage in this thing and I mean this replay in particular is going to showcase that uh, but you have that mobility to relocate you've got the camo to be able to at least remain somewhat undetected you know it's not got the best camo in the world so you're probably not going to be able to have this outstanding replay like an e25 in terms of its camo but what you can do is utilize bush mechanics and it will come out really really nicely with this tank now you're seeing here the enemy team feeling the punch of the scorpion g and this is what it's all about and if you've paid 30 quid for this tank i'm sure that you would probably be wanting it to be somewhat decent and you would be right in saying that now you can purchase this tank for the base version of 30 pounds which is to all intents and purposes very expensive but the fact that wargaming have sold this tank in not just the standard version so costing 30 pounds but all the way up to about 60 pounds if you want some of the additional extras that wargaming will charge you for the pleasure of actually getting and that's really where wargaming have made their millions they have sold probably hundreds of thousands of this vehicle at this point if not millions of the scorpion g over the course of its lifetime being in the game and it's because of the fact that it is just so reliable it has the silver earning potential and it is a fairly fun one if you are interested in getting into the td playstyle it's a good kind of starter vehicle because it gets the mobility you're not limited by that so you can learn a bit from that 
You don't have the armor model necessarily, so it means that you have to learn to play these kind of glass cannon TDs, and also the fact that you have a considerable amount of damage, so you don't have to poke around too many corners and you can trade with heavy tanks. Not that you would want to be trading with a, a heavy tank considering you only get 1100 hit points, but if you find yourself in that position, it can still work. Now, in this game, you're seeing it's predominantly a tier 8 and tier 7 game. There's a few tier 6s, and of course, when you are in a tank that does 490 alpha base, you're going to be able to deal that damage and take away probably three quarters, if not even more, of the tier 6s in the game. So that's really something that is just outstanding about the Scorpion G. And even at tier 8, you're probably chunking off at least a third of the hit points of pretty much every vehicle you come up against at the tier. And I mean, even tier 9s and 10 mediums will be chunking away nearly a third of their hit points as well. So that's really where this tank can be a complete game changer in terms of dealing the damage and allowing you to come out with results that a lot of other vehicles just wouldn't be able to do. Things like the... Um, some of the other tier 8 tank destroyers which maybe focus more on having damage per minute doesn't allow you to get as many shots off uh, consistently effective dpm because you know you might have 15,000 dpm but if you have to fire every like half a second and there you aren't having the opportunity to actually fire every half a second then you're not going to be able to get that dpm so the fact that this has the 490 allows you to easily pick up the damage um, and you know you don't have to poke all too much you only have to fire so many shells to be able to maximize uh, the damage per minute whereas you know in the faster firing uh, tank something like a Krupp's Day or Waffentrager down at tier 7 you know you're having to fire a hell of a lot more to maintain your damage and even the fact that that tank doesn't have the best damage per minute anyway makes it even more annoying but the Scorpion G complete different story this tier 8 is certainly a pretty balanced tank let's just say and talking about balance, the teams are very unbalanced right now. There's six opponents on the enemy team and it's looking like it's going to be a bit of a ruffle stomp. Remember, the Scorpion G does not have armor. So as soon as you're spotted, as soon as the tanks make their way towards you and you cannot maintain hidden, then you're going to end up taking these shells. You're going to end up back in the garage pretty quickly. Now, unfortunately for his teammate there, he gets hit by the KV-2. It was a schmeal, so gets taken out pretty easily um, and he's gone back to the garage. The Brask on the enemy team still alive. You've got a T-32 who's poking round. You've got basically the, the whole entire enemy team kind of <laughs> coming round in a circle. They're going to encircle the Scorpion and with the KV-2 on the enemy team as you saw with the uh, Stura Emil there you can quickly remove the rest of your hit points and so you need to ensure that it doesn't hit any of that turret and you also have to be aware that with uh, things like autoloaders like the Progetto you've got to be very careful as well but unfortunately for the Progetto that was the last shell he's going to be able to deal in this game but there are still three opponents so he's pulled back three vehicles within this replay so far and I guess the fact that this is even on YouTube probably gives you an indication as to what happens now the enemy vehicles on the on their team are pretty much tier 6s. There's not a whole lot of uh, carrying that needs to be done. For some reason, our player here decides he's going to use a lot of HE in the vehicle. I probably wouldn't recommend this since, you know, you don't need 8 HE rounds uh, for the most part. And in scenarios like this, you really want to make sure that you have actual rounds to be able to deal damage. But we won't hold him too much uh, to account doesn't manage to get the intuition there I don't know if he has intuition it might be one of the first games he's played in this vehicle hence why maybe he didn't realize to change the HE loadout and maybe uh, that's the reason why he doesn't have intuition or at least didn't wait for intuition to proc because maybe it's not there to even use but either way one round left and there is a medium tank on the enemy team but don't worry it's not a medium tank that is going to pose too much of a threat, especially if you can use camo and concealment to avoid being hit altogether. It's a VK3021M. And this is really where this tank is a vehicle that is completely different to what you'd expect. Now, you're seeing here uh, not particularly the best use of the bushes. You probably should have pulled back behind the bush to be able to get a free shot into the VK, seal off the damage, and there's no way of him being able to really spot you. 
Uh, of course, now you can go back into the bush. It's unlikely that VK is going to be able to spot you. And with just a two shells, the VK goes from full health all the way down to zero with just a HE round. Bearing in mind, has 65 millimeters of uh, penetration and they managed to actually pen the side of the VK. So really, really nice game. And of course, coming away with the victory. We'll have a look at the post-game stats at the end of the video. So stay tuned because this next replay is outstanding as well. And we'll see just how good this tank is in a different kind of matchup. So you saw what this vehicle could do up against the lower tiers and I'm sure that showcasing a lower tier video where we see a vehicle play up against the bottom tiers is going to be uh, quite substantially easier for a player to come out with a good result. But what happens when you are the same and equivalent tier? But remember, this isn't usually the case, so don't go getting your hopes up thinking that the Scorpion G is going to be one of the most outstanding vehicles, even though at the time when this was released it probably was. Um, it's certainly gone downhill a little bit since then, but it is very powerful in the right hands, and as a tank destroyer, when you play it as it's supposed to be, very strong right now. But you're seeing not a lot of replays where you're seeing going up against tier 10s wherein inordinate amount of damage has been done and that's because this tank is fairly hard to get right because when you start going up the tiers everything seems to get the same amount of alpha as you and that means that they can deal pretty much the same amount of alpha to you but you're having to deal way more shots to be able to remove their hit points which means that when it comes down to being able to carry in these top tier games it's so much harder you've only got 1100 hit points which even at tier 8 is not particularly the most amount of hit points meaning that you're coming up against medium tanks that have way more than you I mean for example class and point the AMBT has 200 more and I mean that's a medium tank heavy tanks have literally nearly 40% more hit points you're seeing the IS-6 there and this is the problem that you have with the Scorpion G and it only gets accentuated as you move up through the tiers which means that yes it might be very good at tier 8 it might be very good at tier 9 it starts to become a real problem as you move up into tier 10 and of course this is not preferential you do not get any treatment by wargaming <laughs> although you might get some treatment in terms of the performance um, of the vehicle compared to some of the tech tree alternatives but it's um it's certainly a tank that has uh, not aged as well as it as some of the other vehicles in the game but either way still very powerful but in a tier 8 game you don't have, it, have to worry about all of those tier 10s. You don't have to worry about the alpha as much. And so you can come away with results uh, where there's a lot of damage in the game in a tier 8 game. So you can still have, you know, a 7 or 8k damage game potentially. Maybe we'll see that in this replay. Uh, but you're not limited by how many tanks are on the enemy team. So ideally, you really want to be in like a, maybe a tier 9 and tier 8 game if you were purely based on trying to get as much damage. When you're in a tier 6 game, you're getting limited by the actual hit points of the enemy team as to how well you can perform. And often you're shooting at targets that have maybe taken one hit already, which means you don't get a full shot of damage if you're fighting against tier 6s or 7s. And that can be a problem, of course, if you're going for marks of excellence. So tier 8 game perfect for the scorpion g you can pen absolutely everything and anything in the game uh, at tier 8 with this thing especially if you're aiming at weak points and yeah it can be really really good to use so you're seeing here good use of this position you know everyone knows about the position here uh, no surprise here and that's really where you're allowed to sit up here get side shots doing everything perfectly no need to push no need to change anything or do anything radical and especially not when there are things like bz176 in the game which certainly are a hard counter to a scorpion g since you don't have any armor and they can deal double the damage that you can in this thing which is absolutely fine and dandy apparently by wargaming but hey ho power creep still comes around and wargaming need to make their next million dollar tanks within the game and <laughs> there's no surprise about that but either way full tier 8 game and the enemy team have won the hill and you'd be noting oh crap the enemy team have won the hill they're seemingly winning the kind of southern area of the map they've got the central area of the map other than the fact that there's the hawk who's just been taken out so they've won the middle of the map and now you're in a case where the typical TD mentality comes out and this position is so strong especially with a scorpion G that has fairly good DPM like we've talked about 
And you can get up here, you can push down these trees, which is highly recommended, gets yourself a bit more camo. You can sit here and you can wait for the enemy team to move down this hill area where you can see the SMB and the Emil. As soon as they start doing it, like this Vipera, for example, you can get a nice little shot into the side of them or maybe even uh, the lower plates. Now, unfortunately, of course it doesn't, the shell misses, which is lovely um, and just what you want when you're trying to carry in a game like this in a clutch scenario. Vipera does actually start moving forward, stops a little bit. He knows, of course, this position is a bit of a clobber one, so wants to try and avoid taking any more damage. But unfortunately for him, he pushed up way too far and pays the ultimate price and gets sent back to the garage. So really nice to see 4,750 damage done within this replay so far. And with things like the Emil 1, which can clip you out from full health, you have to be a little bit careful about getting spotted. Now, the Emil itself gets spotted, he's now in a hold down position, but don't worry because uh, if you if they get into a position like that, not that he is right there, you can always Amarak them because <laughs> it's perfectly balanced. But we were going to say that the premium rounds of the Scorpion G are, as you'd say, the pièce de resistance of the vehicle, 311 millimeters, which means Tier 10s would probably fear this gun. 311 allows you to go through pretty much every single tier 10 uh, from the front. If you're aiming at weak points, maybe you'd struggle with things like the Type 5 and things like that that just have inordinate amounts of armor, maybe the Mausers, etc. But, you know, E100 turrets you can pen if they're angling towards you and they're not actually, like, angling at all. Um, you know, the typical... Lots of weak points that can be penned in tier 10, so you don't have to worry about that. It's more about that hit point pool and, of course, trying to bait your way against people that have the same or higher alpha, which is a pain in the backside when you're playing the Scorpion, which makes it somewhat difficult to play at the pinnacle or to keep consistent because, remember, not every game is a tier 8. In fact, it's probably more rare to be in a tier 8 game in this thing than it is to be in a tier 10, which is a bit disappointing and can kind of let this tank down, but... That's pretty much every tank in the game, you know, not a lot of tanks do particularly that great in a matchup where they are bottom tier. But this one uh, maybe gets affected a little bit more comparatively to its effectiveness in a tier 8. So I hope I haven't over convoluted this video and you guys have been enjoying just seeing the damage rack up. You can see this tank is very kind of simple to play once you've mastered it but it's about knowing where to position yourself in the game uh, to allow you to just sit there and farm damage because that is ultimately what this thing is all about is sitting there waiting for the opponents to make the mistake and just repeatedly hitting them with this 490 alpha damage and coming away with thousands if not maybe even 10,000 damage uh, as I've seen on a few Scorpion G videos where they go absolutely ham but it's very rare uh, that that even is uh, the case since sometimes you're limited by how much ammo you have in the tank and so you have to actually hit pretty much everything to even reach over 10,000 damage there or thereabouts. So 7,240 damage done. There's what 10 rounds left in the vehicle. You've got a few HE and with tanks on the enemy team that you could potentially pen like the SU-130 PM, Scorpion G, maybe even the LT-432, but it's going to be a difficult one to pen with HE. Um, and considering he's on pretty low hit points anyway, you'd be better off firing the standard rounds. Uh, and then of course this Pesante who's being a bit of a pain in the ass who's been up on the hill. One thing that I always find on this map is as soon as you start to lose your teammates over here, this position becomes a little bit more difficult, a little bit more strenuous because what you have to do is you have to spot for yourself. You have to provide some vision lines. And if you come over to the map border over here in this bush, what you can do is you can spot uh, from here gives yourself like a line of vision between these two trees and you can actually end up spotting people that go down the hill and they can't spot you because you're in the bushes as well um, but you know it depends on where you've knocked down the trees and stuff like that so you have to be a little bit careful uh, of course the LT432 actually gets uh, spotted and he takes him out of course you saw that if you've had uh, if you've been following along but now the Basante on the enemy team does get spotted and with this vehicle, uh, you want to make sure that you uh, do actually hit because at this sort of range, it's more than likely you can get spotted. Uh, but as soon as the Basante goes behind the bush that's directly in front, provides the camo bonus, 
you're going to be able to fire without getting spotted. And it's plays like that that will change the Scorpion G for you if you did decide to purchase it or if you are thinking about purchasing this vehicle uh, from the Wargaming store that is right now, then, you know, you can, you really do need to think about these things. Um, and to all intents and purposes, I absolutely love this vehicle. I think it's a super solid one. I think it combines quite a few different things uh, that you need to know within World of Tanks to come out with results that you'd be happy with. And so, yeah, I just think it has pretty much everything. Now, one thing that I always enjoy about this tank is that in situations like this, where the game is starting to end up and you're having to move, you can go 50 kilometers an hour. You have a Panther hole that is fairly quick, and that means that you can move forward. You can uh, be a bit of an aggressive player. And of course, you can also spot for yourself using the good view range uh, that the Scorpion gets uh, comparatively. Now, a lovely shell goes into the Scorpion, firing the HE round, 630 damage, and of course, securing the victory. Let's jump into the post-game stats, as I'm sure you're eager to see how well both of these players performed uh, statistically. So the first game then, the 1 versus 6, showcased the Scorpion G against the lower tier opponents where it is absolutely dominant and of course managing to pick up the Collar Banovas Medal, High Caliber Top Gun and the Mastery Badge, no surprise. Fixie Hartman, 99, a really good replay from yourself and a really good one to showcase. 7,313 damage with 7 uh, kills and of course coming away with probably more damage than the entire team combined. So big thumbs up uh, for that result and of course managing to pick up 80,000 silver as well from not having to fire exclusive premium for once which is nice to see and in a battle that only lasted nine minutes. And then the final replay, we had Sergeant Miller 2 here managing to come away with the Mastery Badge, Bruiser, Demolition Expert, Fire for Effect, High Caliber and Top Gun, uh, managing to pick up 9,213 damage, 7 kills and 1,866 base experience, managing to make 313,000 silver. So you can see how outrageous the silver amount can get with this thing and of course that is using personal reserves and of course personal missions as well so an amazing result in terms of the amount of silver you made and a brilliant tank as well seeing that it was an exclusive premium with this as well and yeah what a great result it was to come away with that game and of course dealing more damage than the entire team combined you're getting a slight feel for how well the scorpion can perform and why wargaming's bank account has performed very well indeed as well so hopefully this video has been very good i'd be highly uh, interested to see what you guys have to say about the scorpion and the scorpion g and what you guys would do about this thing uh, if you were to balance this thing even more, do you think it needs balancing or do you think it's in a good place? And if you have any questions regarding this, let me know in the comment section down below or if I got anything wrong, let me know as well. And yeah, very interested to see what you guys have to say. But if you want to check out any more videos like this one where we showcase a ton of different games, outrageous games, brilliant tanks, underrated tanks, then highly recommend you take a look at the two videos on screen right here, one after the other if you want to, um, but yeah, they're really good as well. And of course, subscribe if you aren't already and let me know what you thought of the video, good or bad, in the comment section down below and I'll see you there. Goodbye.